All right. I hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> First thing I have for you today is a bell ringer from yesterday. And uh, after the bell ringer, I just want to review the study guide with you because your test is tomorrow. Okay. Your exam is tomorrow. So make sure you're ready for that. Uh, there will be short answer on it. So make sure that uh, you have your notes in order. You have your bell ringers. Make sure you look over those because that is obviously very important for the short answer. The bell ringers, okay, I'll give you a grade for that as well. So turn your bell ringers uh, to the assignment tomorrow. And, well, actually, if you wanted to, you could do that today if you'd like. Uh, you could just turn them in today because today's the last bell ringer. Tomorrow we won't have one because... Uh, obviously the test. So if you want to turn in your bell ringers for today, that would be the best. I'll put an announcement on, uh, or I'll just put an announcement on the assignment for today. So you could just turn those in right now and then I'll be able to put those grades in all for tomorrow and you'll have your grade for your test and your bell ringers in and uh, everything will be good. Um, yeah. So again, the test is a 24 hour limit. I know it's going to fall into Saturday. It is what it is. Okay. It's just how it works. So make sure you take your test tomorrow. Um, as soon as you see the assignment, just take it and get it done with. It's not going to be long. It's a Google form like usual, uh, but there will be short answer. All right. So for the bell ringer for today, describe the Red Scare in America towards the ending of World War I and the stages after the Great War. All right. So I'll give you a few seconds. You can pause the video and answer that question. All right, so describe the Red Scare in America towards the ending of World War I and the stages after the Great War. So we know there's large portions of immigration to the United States, specifically from Eastern Europe, where, guess where? Uh, you know, the Balkan region. Okay, we talked about that, where Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania is located, and even up towards where Russia, okay, obviously Russia. And a lot of that has to do with turmoil. A lot of that has to do with uh, poor leadership. Uh, these countries just emerging in the Balkan region and how they had conflict with Austria-Hungary. And they're just the threat of uh, aggressive countries' powers right next door to them. And with the United States, let's face it, there's no one around them, right? We have the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean separating us from the rest of the world. And the only other threat we have is Mexico, right? Okay, we talked about the Spanish-American War, American imperialism, how we eliminated all these European countries from the Western Hemisphere. So there was no threat in america and uh, many immigrants knew that so that's why a lot of people came to the united states for better opportunities and guess what the united states was rising as the number one industrial power okay and that's what will happen at the end of world war one we will be the strongest industrial power in the world so why wouldn't you want to come to america okay but there's a lot of issues with that uh, for many many years we knew that there is uh, a lot of nativist movements in the united states where immigrant groups weren't welcome and a lot of that had to do with, uh, you know, job status, okay, immigrants coming in and maybe taking jobs away from the nativist white man, right, in America, these American citizens, okay, although, let's face it, we're all immigrants in a way, okay, we all came from some sort of descent, okay, and uh, with that, this caused a lot of rebellions, riots, uh, it caused a lot of uh, tensions in the United States and conflicts to a point where there's a lot of bloodshed, there's a lot of uh, mistreatment of people. Okay, and uh, there's a lot of other issues that resulted from immigration coming to the U.S. with mobs and mafias forming in the mid 1800s uh, because of immigrant groups and because of interests, nativist groups. There's a lot of tensions occurring during that time, uh, which caused issues throughout all of America. And one of the biggest things, because we have this huge influx, this huge immigration from Eastern Europe, specifically from Russia, was, who knows, communist ideas might come and arise in the United States. And if that happens, that's going to eliminate our capitalist economy. And uh, that's something that the United States had pride over. And as we're becoming a stronger industrial power, we needed these capitalist private industries. And with the Espionage Sedition Act, this kind of pegged off of uh, you know, are pegged into the Red Scare. Okay, already we were in a way limiting freedom of speech in the United States and uh, targeting some groups specifically from German heritage. And why not do the same to these these communist, uh, these socialist um, groups and uh, you know assemblies in the United States? And uh, with that, they tried to eliminate them. 
okay, in many ways try, try to take their freedom of speech, their freedom of assembly away from these people, which we know is the First Amendment. And this caused a lot of issues with court cases, um, with Shank versus the United States, which we mentioned. And there's many other ones where uh, the United States government is trying to restrict the, the, the say of people in the U.S. specifically of their interests with socialism, communism, and they're trying to take that away. And with these immigrants, immigrant groups coming in, we all know the KKK. Okay, that was a big thing in the early 1900s. Which caused a lot of a lot of problems, a lot of conflicts within the United States, not only in the South but in the North. Okay, we know the Jim Crow laws in the South, but the North really wasn't too welcome of other groups either. With the Great Migration happening, a lot of African Americans after the Civil War moving north for opportunities and jobs. Okay, uh, which we'll talk about more next chapter in the 1920s. So the KKK, uh, you know. Um, anti-Semitic groups forming in the United States. And there's a lot of tension going on uh, in these particular, in this particular time um, and uh, caused a lot of problems. And with Sacco and Vanzetti, right? These two immigrants are actually from Italy and uh, they were charged and executed because they were thought to be communist sympathizers. Yeah, they had a group, they, they had interest in, in communism, right? And socialism, but um, it doesn't mean that they're murderers, right? It doesn't mean that they should be killed for these actions. And uh, that was the time period. It was almost like a witch hunt. People would go around, they called the Palmer Raids, which we'll talk about next chapter, and accuse people of being communist, socialists, even if they just didn't like the person. And that resulted in a lot of times of lynching, killing, throwing these people in jail. All right, so there you have it, the Red Scare in the United States after World War I. A lot of it had to do with immigration, immigration coming in. Okay, and we talk about the Spanish flu and how there's a lot of issues, a lot of problems emerging after World War One in the United States. It wasn't all great roaring 20s and and uh, booming industries. There's a lot of other issues happening during that time, which kind of gets pushed under the carpet when you think of the roaring 20s and the prosperity that was emerging, which we'll talk about next chapter. All right. There you have it. There you have it. We'll move on now to the study guide. So everybody's all on the same page. Again, your test is tomorrow. Okay, test is tomorrow. You have a 24-hour limit on that. All right, so one, a country should maintain a strong military capability and prepare to use it aggressively to defend and promote national interest in what term? We know that as militarism, right? Okay, that was one of the five causes. Remember mania. I know it's been a while, but mania. Use of media to persuade the masses, usually biased to express a political cause or point of view. Propaganda. There's many uh, many uh, influences, uh, different types of examples of propaganda used. Promote American interest. Uh, try to dehumanize, right, the enemy, which we know in Germany, viewing them as gorillas, as apes, bloodthirsty people. Okay. Ch Chancellor of Prussia, who helped unify Germany with strong military presence. We know that is Otto von Bismarck. I know that's been a long while, too. Okay, at the end of Chapter 2, which we talked about ri rising world power and transitioning into World War I, uh, Otto von Bismarck was a big player in unifying Germany and allowing them to become this dominant threat in Europe and the world. Treaty end of war in Germany and the Allied powers signed June 28, 1919. The Treaty of Versailles, and we know those five um, I guess you say limitations, reparations towards Germany. Make sure you remember those five points. Okay, we went over that. Uh, four, five, 14 principles of peace that was used to negotiate after World War One. We know that as the uh, 14 points established by Woodrow Wilson. I know there's 14 of them, but the main one I want you to know, the League of Nations, the last one. Six, who was the aggressive German emperor? who started World War I. He wanted to show the world who, how strong Germany was. Um, again, there's a lot of issues like, oh, did Germany actually start this war? It was more Austria-Hungary, Serbia, right? Uh, they're aggressive, right? They wanted to show the world what kind of military force they had. And that was just a good excuse. So that was Kaiser Wilhelm II. Kaiser Wilhelm II. So we know how Kaiser is just an emperor. He's like a king. Seven, what was the name of the French statesman who played a role in treaty negotiations? Georges Clemenceau. Okay, don't worry about spelling. Clemenceau. He was really the man that pushed Germany lower than dirt. He wanted all the reparations. He wanted all the restrictions towards Germany because with that Franco-Prussian War, even World War I, 
um, Germany was really dominating them on the battlefield. And they didn't want that to happen ever again, which oh, it happens again. Eight, explain what was the international organization established after World War I to prevent future warfare. Wilson's 14th point, the League of Nations. Establishment, okay, there's the, uh, diplomats from all over the, across the world, specifically in Europe, that would come together to try to talk about issues before war would ensue. And we all know that that did not work best. Nine, what was the term limiting amount of resources, goods, usually to benefit the army in a time of war? This is rationing, okay, rationing. What are your vocab terms? Oh, also, turn in your vocab. Okay, turn in your vocab. I need to have that. I want to give you a grade for that, give you an opportunity for more points. Okay, I'll state that at the end and just put it in the announcement. Ten, who was the 28th president of the United States during World War I? Woodrow Wilson. List at least four countries that were part of the Allied powers. I know there's a hundred of them, right? It seems like there's a hundred of them. But uh, the four main ones I want you to know, France, Great Britain, Russia, and the United States. Okay, no trick questions there. Don't worry about the triple entente, the triple alliance, because that was at the start of the war. Now we're ensuing towards the end of the war, and these are the countries involved. And you can even argue, you know, if you want to throw Italy in there, okay, I know they ship, they jump ship here towards the end of the war. But those four main powers, I want you to know, Great Britain, France, United States, and Russia. Russia leaves in 1917, I know that. America joins in 1917, but they were still, they're still respected as those four main powers. 12, list at least three countries that were part of the central powers. Okay, you can, this is like the whole remainder of the war at the end of it. We have Germany, obviously. So Germany, Austria, Hungary, and you can put Ottoman Empire. Who was the Archduke of Austria, Hungary that was assassinated, which started World War I? Franz Ferdinand. 14, describe the battle strategies during World War I. How was a war fought? Trench warfare, right? Well, there was a lot of other types of battle, okay, within open water, in the air. Okay, there's a lot of other, a lot, a lot of other environments, right? But mostly trench warfare. Fifteen. When did the World War One take place? We know that from 1914 to 1918. Many people argue 1919 because that's when the Treaty of Versailles was signed. But uh, armistice, um, when fighting stopped, was in 1918. What was another name for World War One? The Great War, the War to End All Wars, which that was obviously false, and we you know it was World War One. What ship was sunk by a German U-boat that pushed America to join the war? The Lusitania, right? The Lusitania, we know that. What was the important telegram that was sent by Germany to Mexico to try to pull Mexico into the war against the U.S. and only cause the U.S. to join the war? The Zimmerman telegram or the Zimmerman note, whatever you want to say. 19, what was the area between trenches called during battles in World War I? No man's land. Who won World War I and in what year? We know the Allied powers in 1918. Describe different forms of technology, weapons developed and used during World War I. Overall, how was World War I a different type of war? Okay, this is whatever you want to include. So you could say tanks, you could say artillery, you could say... Uh, machine guns, you could say barbed wire, you could say chemical warfare, right? Mustard gas, chlorine gas, you could say U boats, um, airplanes, uh, flamethrowers, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use. There's many other, other uh, forms of weaponry that were used and introduced effectively during this war uh, that you can include. Um, and just explain their benefits. That's really all it is. 22, list and describe the causes of World War I and how they relate to each other. you got to explain how they all mesh together. Right? You just can't list them and say, oh, here you go. No, you got to write out and describe how they all result and affect one another. So we have militarism, alliance system, right? We have nationalism. We have an imperialism and assassination. Mania. Remember mania. Okay. And remember the treaty, Okay, what it did to Germany. We all know that they got the sole blame of the war placed on them. We all know that they're stripped of borderlands, like all sauce and Lorraine. Territorial losses, right? Okay, in parts of Asia, Africa, that they needed resources, right? Um, we all know that military restrictions. So some of their military restrictions was limiting their, their land power, their land army, 
to around 100,000 troops only for defensive purposes and stripped of their Navy, no Navy. Okay. And then finally reparations, which they didn't get to pay off until 2010. Crazy stuff, right? 2010, that wasn't long ago. It was just 10 years ago. And uh, obviously we know the war ended around 102 years ago. Crazy. All right. Uh, that's it for today. So again, please attend.